Hello everyone and welcome to the CMO Stories podcast, season two, episode 18. My name is Yuri Belast and I'm your podcast host. And today I'm really honored to be joined by my good friend, Mark Schaefer. Hello, Mark. How are you this morning? Hi, Yuri. Hi, Yuri. You know, I just, I've been waiting to come on your show. I've been watching it evolve and grow. I thought, when's he going to have me on the show? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, as you know, Mark, but we discussed about it. I think we both agreed that today is is a, a good day because your new book is available. And I think it's available in different formats. There is the paper format, the audio format, also the the Kindle format, if you want. I personally like to have different formats. I told you I have your latest uh, your latest books, and uh, I've listened to them, and then I've read them. But guys, if you don't know Mark, I think most of you know him, but if you don't know him, let me give a small introduction. So Mark Schaefer is an acclaimed marketing consultant, keynote speaker, podcaster, and university educator. He's the author of 10 books, wow, and including one of my favorite books of all time, which is Known, also Marketing Rebellion and Cumulative Advantage, books that I listen to, Mark, that I've read, and your books are used as text at more than 70 universities and can be found in more than 700 libraries and have been translated in 15 languages. Wow, that's amazing. I already told people, the listeners, that your book is available right now. It's called Belonging to the Brand. It's about community. Um, obviously, Mark, I am in your community, and I, I know you. that is really a book that you wanted to write. But my, my first open question, and I think it's perhaps an open question, you can split it up, is why is community, why is community the future of marketing? Well, I just wrote a whole book about that question. I know, I know. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's it's like this. Um, The main thesis behind the book is that there are three megatrends coming together that indicate community is going to be a big part of marketing in in the future. And... um, I think what I'm known for in the world is I have a pretty good track record talking about what's going to be next and, and sort of forecasting what's, what's going to be next. And a lot of people say, well, how do you do that? It's really not that hard. You have to look at what are the big trends in the world and then think it through. What are the implications? And that's really what I'm doing in this book. The three trends are, number one, um, really mental health. It's everywhere. It's in the news every single day. Um, What really started getting my attention, I think, on this, Yuri, is there was a headline in the New York Times. It said, the loneliest generation. That's what Mm -hmm. they're calling Gen Z. And that's heartbreaking to me. I saw a statistic, it was just out a few weeks ago, from a McKinsey study, that 51% of Gen Z, uh, you know, young adults have sought medical attention for mental health problems. The average for all other generations is 24%. They're only, it's 18 to 24. It's it's just mind blowing. So that's, that's trend number one. And it's not just Gen Z, the world in general is whacked out. Trend number two is something I really addressed in the Marketing Rebellion book. And that is the way we have always been doing advertising and marketing. It just isn't working anymore. We're in a streaming economy. People are avoiding ads, blocking ads, paying more to not get ads. Um, we, we can, we're consuming more and more video content and audio content, but we don't. it's harder and harder to reach people, especially young people. So that's point number two. Point number three, and this is probably the point that you and your audience are most interested in, is the technological technological changes that are enabling new ways to belong. Specifically, Web3, tokenized economies, NFTs, metaverse, even to some extent, artificial intelligence. And this sort of connects with a sociological trend about... Gen Z, they're not on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter chats. 
which is where most companies and brands are looking for their customers. They're mm-hmm. not there. They're in Discord. They're on they're on Fortnite. They're in these little digital campfires hiding out from the rest of the world. So there are really vast implications uh, for technology and the future of community. And so those are the three trends that are coming together. And the reason I think uh, community is is a significant, will be a significant part of, of marketing going forward. And it's it's been an overlooked opportunity for, for decades. Yeah, it's also clearly when I read it, the trends that I'm seeing also, it was the first time, you know, this year that a client asks me to not, not talking about marketing for them, for their, uh, for their people, but talking about mental health, you know, everything now with all these new technologies. It's, it's really a challenge. People don't often talk about it, but there is really a demand. So it's really an important trend. Also, something um, that struck me in your book, and I know that you, you, you think it's, it's a big point, that is the difference between an audience and community because that's you know that's all that's that's not the same so perhaps you can you can uh, talk about a bit about that well the goal of of great branding is to create an emotional connection between what you do and your audience so there's it's it's an expectation then that when i experience this person or this brand this is what it's going to be like so you know, a very famous example that I think is uh, accessible to almost all of your listeners is Coca-Cola. You know, Coca-Cola, the product is brown colored sugar water. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. But that's not what we think of when we think of Coca-Cola. We think of polar bears. We think of happiness. We think of times on the beach. And they've accomplished that through decades of advertising and billions of dollars spent on advertising. And as I just said, those days really aren't, you know, we don't really have that opportunity anymore. Now, what a lot of businesses are trying to do now, they're trying to use social media, which is important in a way because we can reach people we might not normally have connected to. Perhaps Yuri, you first heard about me on social media. We met uh, last year for the first time, but you had already known about me, maybe from my blog, maybe from LinkedIn or something. So that was great. You and I were able to connect on social media. You're in Belgium and I'm in America. That probably would have never happened without social media. Now, you were a weak relational link. Now, if you subscribed to my blog or my podcast, now the link becomes stronger. You're part of an audience. And so now it's reliable reach. It's not just throwing a message out on faith, on LinkedIn, hoping that someone will see it. I know a certain percentage of my audience is going to hear my podcast. They're going to read my books. So that's a much deeper relational connection. However, the next step is community. Now, you and I are part of a community. We've become, I think, very good friends. We're collaborating together. We're co-creating together. You're leading events in my community. So if I went away, you're, all these events, the things that you're working on are still going to go. Friendships are being created, not just with me, but you're creating friendships with other people in the group. And that makes you appreciate this community even more and even have a stronger uh, relationship to the, the, the community. That's a really interesting thing compared to what we consider normal marketing. The focus on community is not so much building a community, uh, building a relationship with the sponsor, which would be the brand. It's helping people connect to each other. Because if they're connected to each other, they'll want to go there every day because it's fun and they're being rewarded for it. I know, you know, people are helping each other, you know, uh, supporting each other uh, in good times and in bad times. And 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 that is, is, it's a way in this whacked out world where mental health is such a big issue to actually heal, 
to actually have people feel good about themselves, to have self-esteem. So community is not just good for a business, it's good for the world. Right. Yeah. When you when you talk about that, that's really what I've been feeling. Eh? It's really being a part of the community, really have friendships, even if I'm not you know, on the same location. Yeah. But then again, if there are physical events that you meet those people and, and the other way around, you meet people on physical events, and then you are in their community, like it happened with us. It's really a strong bond, uh, I would say. But Mark, it's really, I, I love being uh, in your community and, you know, it, it grows and it grows, but it seems for people listening to the podcast and, you know, starting community, building a community, it's it's hard. So why is, do you see? It, it, it is hard. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, it, it, it is hard work. But But here's the other thing I think about. I've been in marketing for a long time. And I think I can say with some authority, by far, this is the hardest time to be in marketing. This is, it's, it's hard to stand out. It's hard to cut through the noise. There's so much competition, so much content, so many fragmented channels. So marketing is hard to begin with. And if you're right. still focusing on branded content and SEO and advertising, why not work on something that's hard work, but will give you a better chance of succeeding? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and honestly, the, the community is a lot of work, but it's so rewarding. I mean, it's just so much fun. Um, you know, it, I, I, I'm, I'm addicted to it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it also gives, you know, the energy. And, yeah. uh, and once you see it growing, it's, it's really motivating. You meet people and so on. But for you, you had, we talked about audience community. You had already an audience. Now you're building this community. People from your audience, they come into your community. Mm -hmm. I, as you say, I I was aware of you. you I, I knew your name you asked your, because you're in the marketing world, one of the, I would say, the authorities. So I followed you. I met you. I wanted to meet you. I came to the community and we are meeting. But um, it's not so easy to, to start one. And, and why do you think that most communities fail, actually? Do you have... Um, well, there, I think there, there are two reasons. Actually, there's, it, it, it boils down to one reason. Um, the research shows about 70% of brand communities fail. And the main reason is there's a misalignment with the, the, with the culture and the purpose. Many businesses start a community with the, they, and the goal is to sell more stuff. Exactly, yeah. Nobody wants to join a community if, they're just, it's, if it's just another advertisement. So the, the, where you need to start is the, the intersection of, of something that's important to you and something that's important to your audience. So for me, my community is not about selling things. I'm a, I'm a teacher who is passionate about the future of marketing. I'm just a geek about it. And so this community, that's what we do. We're like talking about new ideas. I mean, the three biggest impacts of my life right now in terms of like where things are going are like artificially generated images, chat GPT, um, uh, you know, TikTok. Uh, these, these are all topics, you know, metaverse. These are all topics that we are exploring and pushing each other, you know, and I heard about all these things first in our community. So even though I'm the teacher, my community has become my university. That's what's pushing me in, into new ideas. And one of the small examples I have in, in the book that I think many uh, can relate to, at least uh, you know, maybe not so much in, in Europe, but certainly in America, is Harley Davidson. So mm -hmm. Harley Davidson is, is the number one selling motorcycle brand in, in America and is popular around the world. And they're the purpose of their gigantic community is to help people fulfill their dreams through the motorcycle lifestyle, which is a friendly way of saying, we want to help you be a badass. Yeah. And every person from the top of the company to the bottom of the company is devoted to that one thing. It's not selling more stuff. It's not having deals and coupons 
and you know crazy advertising stuff. They don't spend money on that. They don't need to because their community loves them so much they're, and, and they're so in tune with helping people become badasses. You know, every product, every piece of clothing, you know, all the leather jackets, it's meant to make you be, a, you know, a badass. And so that's the intersection. Now, when you think about, think about in, there in Europe, people who are trying to sell cars, they're all trying to do the same thing. They're all trying to advertise and they're having special deals. They're spending all this money on stuff people don't want. Community, think about Harley Davidson. They don't do any of those things. They don't have to. And people love being part of the Harley Davidson community. Isn't that remarkable? Mm-hmm. That community is the only kind of marketing people embrace. They want it. They love it. And that's that's why community is the future of marketing. Yeah, I think your title is also well chosen for your book, like uh, belonging. People want to belong, you know, want to be a part of the community. That's one also the things when I was giving the course, the workshop about mental health, that I said people want are social beings. People want to connect with each other. They yeah. they are not made to be to be alone. Um, but yeah, it, I, I really love also the the advantages, the connections that you can within within a community. It's um, also for mental health and so on. But bigger companies or brands would say, yeah, but how can we measure the success of a community? So if we do this, um, what would you answer to those people? Well, I think this is one of the most significant contributions of this book. Um, I mean, community isn't new. But what's different about my book is viewing community through the lens of brand marketing. And that's the big difference because 70% of communities today are devoted to customer service. You know, it's a tech company. Oh, you have a problem with our software, go in our community and they'll help you figure it out. Well, that's easy to measure because every problem the community solves is cost avoidance for the customer service people. So the accountants love that. What I challenge people to think about in the book, I compare a famous sports drink product, Gatorade, to their distant competitor, Powerade. Gatorade sponsors, they're they're culturally relevant. They support the biggest athletes. I mean, Lionel Messi was one of their spokespeople, right? Talk about timely. Um, Yeah. um, They they sponsor big stadium events. And uh, here's something funny. In America... I believe this is only an American thing. When some a, a, a team wins a big match, the teammates sneak up behind the coach or the star player and they dump a big, you know, vat of Gatorade over their head. It's called the Gatorade <laughs> bath. Okay. And it's fun because the coach doesn't know it's coming and then it comes and this ice goes all over them, but it's just a tradition. It's always on TV. Well, Here's something interesting. The other day I was watching a match and Powerade was the sponsor. The players came up with the Powerade vat. And here's what the announcer said. Oh, here comes the Gatorade bath. So that's how strong this brand Power Gatorade is compared to Powerade. Gatorade owns 80% of the $30 billion sports drink market. Now, when you see this Gatorade bath on TV, does that sell more Gatorade? Well, you'd have to think it makes a difference because all these sponsorships they're doing and all this con- the contract they have with Lionel Messi, how, you know, how do you measure? But they're the number one leader, so it works. Can you measure it? No. Now, Powerade, they're doing coupons and deals and all the stuff that the companies normally do that we're doing in our communities to try to sell more stuff. My challenge is, what if you were the Gatorade in your industry instead of the Powerade in your industry? By the way, Gatorade here in America, $2 a bottle, their competitor, 89 cents. 
they charge more than twice as much for their product because they're so beloved and trusted as a brand. So the problem is if we're only looking at customer service, we're missing things like the things that you and I have been talking about, strong relationships, collaboration, co-creation. You and I, we're co-creating content right now. In some ways, you're an advocate. You're, you, you know, you're, you're talking in glowing terms about my community and me and my book. That wouldn't have happened if you hadn't been part of my community, right? So we're seeing these brand benefits in action right here. Uh, you know, we don't, you know, you know, I, I'm not trying to, in the community, I'm not trying to sell anything. I don't, I, I don't help have deals. So, so it's about building these relationships that lead to people helping each other and collaborating in positive ways like this. That's the new way we should be looking at community. Yeah, well, yeah, that's really an inspiring message, I, I would say, Mark, because people always look at, at figures, but it's much broader. And if you want to make a difference, there is more things that are not measurable that also really count. Um, yeah, you were talking about community. I was one of the first members in there, in the RISE community. Um, and as people that don't know the RISE community, uh, you, you started it on Discord. Um, that was in the beginning a challenge, I think. It was token-gated. It's still token-gated, so people cannot you know, be a member like that. They, they, they need to have the token. Um, so what are your thoughts on, on communities and then the technology, the Web3 technology um, linked to that because we have some experience, oh, of course. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, it's interesting because, um, you know, we started out token gated, the token gating the community um, through uh, the rise, the rally, you know, crypto tokens and, and rally failed. Um, but it was still a good learning experience. And um, now, you know, we, so we've got a team put together and we're looking at how do we use NFTs uh, in, I, I'm, I miss the tokens. The, the tokens were a lot of fun because it was a way to reward people. And I, yeah. I, I love that. I mean, I just love that. And I think when the time is right, I would, I would do it again um, because it's a, it's a bi-directional relationship where when people do things, you know, nice things for me, I could do something nice back for them. Say, hey, here's some tokens. You can use it in different ways in the community. I, I, I really miss that. You know, now we're going to be looking at, at uh, NFTs, not only to um, provide um, a, a token for, for, for a gate, uh, but to elevate people, to reward people, um, you know, I, I acknowledged uh, you and our mutual friend, Frank Prendergast, as sort of the Hall of Fame members of year one of the community. So I want to do something special. I want to create some kind of NFT that, you know, that means something. Um, and, and so that's the next challenge is, is where do we go with this? How do we use NFTs in really a meaningful way um, to not just, um, you know, attract people to the community, make people excited about community, but use it as a way to just elevate people, celebrate people, create more value. Uh, it's, it's a super exciting opportunity. That's going to be my main priority in 2023. Right. Yeah. There are, and, you know, the world is evolving and more and more people get to know. They hear about Web3. They are educated, getting educated. They, they understand what is happening. Um, so that's also something that happens in the community. People are just learning so much. I also love the, ampli uh, sorry, the amplification channel where you can, you know, people that help you, you can reward them. I love that. So that would be good to, to have that again. Yeah. Um, so... so when you look back, Mark, at, uh, since the beginning of your community on Discord and now, are there some other lessons learned that you have that you would have done differently? Or are you saying, okay, no, this is how I would always do it? Oh, great question. Well, I mean, I, I, I've certainly learned so much. Um, I'm still learning every day. I think what I did right in the community is um, 
set a tone for the culture um, an expectation that this was going to be a positive community where I will not tolerate toxicity. It made me sad. There was one person that joined the community and she, she didn't use her real name. And I said, why don't you use your name? She said, well, I've had so many bad experiences on Discord where it's such a, tox a toxic place. I said, well, it's not going to be that way. And it hasn't been that way. So that I've, you know, I, I, I've done well. Um, uh, I think we've got just a, a, a really amazing, diverse group of people. Um, you know, we had this metaverse party, Christmas party. And uh, at the end of the event, uh, we jumped in a virtual hot tub. <laughs> and in, in the hot tub, there was like someone from Australia and UK and Ireland and Canada. And we we're all in this hot tub together. So we're really, it, it's fun having people from all over the world, um, not just there, but enthusiastically there. Like Australia is so far away and the people from Australia are like demanding, you know, <laughs> we want to be part of this, you know, do something on our time zone, which I think is fantastic. What I would do differently. Um, but I know that you're, you're spending a lot of time in it. So you are there every day. And I know you have been busy with writing the book. Did that have an impact in writing the book? Did, did the book, you know, was it harder to write the book because of the community or did the experience with being present in Discord help well, you writing it, the book? It went together. It really went together. I mean, I, I knew I couldn't really write a book on community unless I had a community. And the, the thing that, that was so um, really a re revelation um, was as I was doing the research, it explained a lot of things that were happening in the community. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, 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 and so, so I'll give you an example. Um, like, uh, like I, I regard my most important role as, as really nurturing the culture and make sure that everybody is, is adhering to that. Um, not adhering to a, by a plan, or a strategy, but just staying in the riverbanks of kindness is really my my role. And then the other one is, uh, you know, even though everybody's there and they're helping each other and they're connecting, I, I think I'm still kind of seen as the papa bear in the community, you know. And and so I, I, I want to acknowledge people. I want to reward people. So bestowing status is really important. People want to be seen. They want to be heard. They want to be acknowledged. And so even if it's just like leaving a little emoji for them or something, I want them to know that they're appreciated, um, that they're, they're val they're, you know, they're, they're important. Um, they're needed in the community. And, uh, you know, one of the, one of the things, you know, I don't know if I'm doing this right or doing this wrong, but what I'm noticing is a lot of new people joining the community are not becoming active. So it's like, are they intimidated? Or do they feel like they're coming in like act two of a play that's already started? How do we get them onboarded? How do we make them feel welcome? I want every, I, I want this to be absolutely, it's free. And by the way, you know, if your listeners uh, are interested, uh, they can, you know, drop you a note or drop me a note. Exactly. It, it, it's, it's, it, and we'll get them in. It's, it's free. It's, it, it's it's valuable. There's a lot of amazing content being shared. Um, we do sort of have like a a premium uh, edition where we're getting to meet like legendary, truly legendary marketing icons like uh, Tom Peters, David Meerman Scott, Nancy Harhut, um, and uh, so this is like life changing opportunities. <laughs> It's, I mean, I, a, I think it's just life changing opportunities to get to actually, you know, meet these people and listen to these people and, you know, get to know them. So there's a lot of value being created. Uh, so, I mean, that's so another priority for me is and I'm going to start on this really right away. Um, like, how do we reach out to people that 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 aren't active and at least find out what what can we what can we be doing better? That's that's it's a chronic problem right now. Yeah, 
but you know it's step by step i would say um and also yeah it's a no-brainer you know to join the community there are so many things so you 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 can network you can learn you can you can you know share problems with people ask their opinions you can help each other um so there are projects that we are doing together like you know there is a book project that will be coming up we will be talking about this on a later time but that's yeah. also really amazing to do something together with people in the community they can raise their hand and uh, everybody that wanted in almost everyone that raised their hand in time was in and mark so uh, that's yeah. also a great project that is coming up yeah and it, it, there's just a, a lot of energy a lot of kindness <clears throat> and um it's a it's a it's a friend driven machine <laughs> right yeah so if people want want to join it they can reach out to me they can reach out to you of course guys you can find everything in the show notes from this podcast as you know for every podcast episode there will be an article there will be show notes all the links will be in there and what are the links mark that you want me to put in there how can people best reach out to you or find your books it's it's very simple as you're listening uh your 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 fans are probably saying now how how do you spell schaefer is it the, <laughs> is it the german way is it the belgian way is it the french way is it the american way um you don't have to know all you have to remember is businesses grow if you can remember businesses grow you can find me that's my website you can find my books my blog, my podcast, all my social media connections. You can, um, you, there's a, on the nav bar, you can see uh, a tag for community. You can learn more about Rise. So everything is in that one place and almost everything is free. <laughs> yes. And of course, guys, if you don't know, Mark is often invited as a speaker. So uh, if you see his name on the list, be sure to, to go to his presentations. So, Mark, it was really a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Yuri. As I said, I mean, first of all, I just have to say uh, thank you and how pleased I am to, to be on a show and how grateful I am that you are so well prepared with so many great questions, but I also want to tell you just how proud I am of you <laughs> because you're also a grad, grad graduate of my personal branding masterclass and month by month by month, your star is rising and I'm just so proud of what you're accomplishing. Yeah, thank you, Mark. And actually, yeah, guys, that was a combination of Mark's book, Known, which is really for me one of the books which had the biggest impact on my life. And also, of course, being able to discuss with Mark. I think, Mark, if people just want to have an, uh, a conversation with you, there is a possibility on your website that sure. we, people can book some time with you. So, uh, yeah, that's... I, I've, I've kept the price really low. You can book anybody in the world can book an hour with me because uh, I just want to be accessible to anybody who, who listens to my shows or reads my, my books and blog. So guys, as you see, a lot of ways to reach out to Mark, but if you know you want to start in an easy way, easy going way, just join the Rice community. This will be a lot of fun. It's learning, it's fun, it's connections. I can really recommend that. And if you got some value out of this episode, and I'm sure you have, uh, be sure to share it with your friends with your followers, with your, with your own community, I would say, with your own network. So share this episode. Of course, if you aren't subscribed yet, please do this. And uh, you can find me everywhere on social media. You know that already. Be sure to reach out to me. And for the rest, I would love to see you back for the next podcast episode. Bye.